I'm Corporal R.J. Hammersmack. The best friend I've ever had is my 1911. Snipers talk about one shot, one kill. I've killed six men with one shot of my 1911. You seen one of them long guns on the tank? It's nothing more than one man putting a 1911 through the hollow barrel inside. Oh, you got the Omicron? I got the 1911. Right here. All right, what's happening folks? Today's video is sponsored by USCCA. I've been a card carrying member of USCCA for two or three years now, a long time, and I like the peace of mind that it brings. When you sign up for a USCCA membership, it comes with certain member perks. First benefit, you'll get a self-defense liability insurance policy and it'll come with an emergency critical response number that's available 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. So if something goes sideways, you can report and if you go to court because you're just doing the right thing, they'll have your back. Next benefit is you get to go to their annual show that happens in November of this year and I'll be there so we could be able to do fist bumps and chest bumps and actually I don't want to chest bump you. That's not part of your member benefits for USCCA. Third benefit is USCCA also gives training and education tools and that's available to you as well as a fourth benefit and that's discounts with industry partners. Again, this video is sponsored by USCCA. Thanks guys, on to the video. All right, what's happening folks? Today I thought I would just blow the internet's mind. I would just shock you all by actually shooting and talking about a 1911. For years you guys have been goading me into it. Finally you wore me down and today I'm here to actually talk about a 1911. I am a, what some would call a seasoned shooter. I, I teach pistol rifle classes for many years and all kinds of small unit tactics, room clearing stuff and so, I I know guns. Uh, however, this gun really took me for a ride today. We're doing a, like this competitive shooting course of fire and guys, I was not good. Uh, everything was three times slower than it would have been. I'm getting mics on stuff that I'd never missed with before. And uh, yeah, so I'll give you guys a general overview of 1911. I'll talk about a couple things that I like about it. And then couple, I do mean two. And then I'll talk about a, a bunch of other stuff that I really just don't like. It's not my preference, though it may be yours. We'll talk about specs and features, additional considerations, problems that I ran into, uh, pros and cons. And then we'll wrap this video up with a nice tidy bow and send you on your way to watch other YouTube videos, hopefully our videos, or waste your life playing video games and making TikTok videos and whatever cool kids do on the internet these days. I'll leave you to it. So without further ado, let's run a cool montage of this gun in action. Kimber 1911 chambered in 45 ACP. It's a Kimber custom blah, blah, blah letters and uh, uh, some Roman numerals. And I couldn't remember what those were. So I'm just going to put them on the screen. But right now, instead of just going into the Kimber, I want to talk about 1911s in general and just some of the classic features. The first thing is this grip safety right here. This means you cannot uh, press the trigger unless the grip safety is defeated by nature of grabbing it. So that's an additional safety measure. A second classic feature of a 1911 is this slide lock safety here. As long as the slide lock safety is up, the slide can't go back to the rear. And when you press the trigger, nothing happens because it's locking this hammer from falling forward. Third classic feature of a 1911 is gonna be a single action trigger. What that means is when you press the trigger back, it's gonna release the hammer and it's gonna fire around versus something like a double action trigger. There's some bonus learning for you guys. A double action trigger is going to do two things. For instance, a uh, double action revolver, it's going to pull the hammer back and at some point in that trigger press, release it to go forward and fire around. This is going to be a single action, which means if you're going to carry it and be ready to actually fight somebody, you'll have to rack the slide, which chambers around, and then go ahead and put this 
safety on and then holster and that's going to ha uh, be how you're going to have to do business then you have to defeat this safety on the way out marry up grip and then stack bodies now while we're talking about triggers this is an interesting trigger geometry for somebody who is really shooting more modern firearms my modern pistols have a hinge top whereas this one actuates a little bit more like a sliding glass door the idea behind our patron saint uh, John Browning, may he live forever, was to eliminate our muzzle being pulled off target while we press the trigger. Now, truly, with my modern guns, that's not happening, so it's kind of a solution seeking a problem for me. And if I ever miss, uh, especially with a handgun inside 25 meters or so, it's always a shot anticipation thing. It's not because my trigger was hinged. And so I'm not buying it. However, that is the idea, and I would never, never contradict the late great John Moses Browning, may he again live forever. So there's some classic features of the 1911. However, I wanted to go over some additional considerations that have changed over time since the original design of this gun. One is it came in 45 ACP. However, now it'll come in nine and 380, 357, uh, 40 cal, 10 millimeter. They come in all kinds of different calibers. Some of them come with external extractors, though the uh, the real hardcore 1911 purists will say no, 1911 should have an internal extractor. And if it's not an internal extractor, well, then that's not a real 1911. Same with the removal of the barrel bushing, which was in the original design. Some of them don't have those barrel bushings. Still others, don't have a full length guide rod. It'll be like a partial guide rod. And then that's a big no, no. And so there's all kinds of different modifications that have happened in the 1911 platform. And I'll leave it to you guys who are the purest to debate it out there in the comments of what is and what is not a 1911. I'm a guy that likes other guns and I'm holding this for the internet for you. So don't tear me up too much about it. I'm giving you a little tip of the cap. Go have a dumpster fire fight down below in the comments. It's always fun to watch. I'll get a bag of popcorn and just kind of uh, visit you guys, see what all's going on. I'm going to air my dirty laundry because here is a little known fact. Though I am shooting a 1911, I suck with the 1911. Uh, it's not my first time shooting 1911s. I used to even own one. I had an old Colt Commander. I only put a few hundred rounds through it, maybe a thousand rounds in its entire lifetime. And then my wife and I were really, really broke and we sold the gun. And I didn't look back because I bought better guns with it. And some of you guys are gonna be like, no! And tear, render your garments over that comment. But that's what I did. And so I don't have a 1911 anymore. And this is a borrowed gun. And man, I really despise this gun. I do, I hate it. I hate it, I just, mm, I don't like it. But it has more to do with preference. Like I don't like mayonnaise. And no amount of your comments will make me like mayonnaise. I, I don't have to like anything I don't want to like. I don't like this gun. And I'm going to talk a little bit about why. One is it was just awkward to operate. And this has more to do with my preferences. You're like, well, if you grew up shooting this gun, you'd like it a lot. And that's absolutely true. If I grew up shooting this, I would probably have sentimental, nostalgic ideas concerning it. I would be really good with it because I'd have lots of reps. But as it stands, I felt like a noob out there on the range. As I was out running and gunning, everything literally took about three times longer. My splits uh, at a certain distance, which I should have been running about a 0.3 to a 0.35 splits at a certain distance. That's what I know I should be doing. And instead I was like a 1.05. I'm like, whoa, what, what? Everything was a disaster. And I'm trying to do all these different pieces because this is just, it was an awkward soup sandwich for me. So some of my upset is, is I really am not very good with it. And I felt like I was rewinding the clock on 20 years of experience and starting all over. And I didn't like that, right? Uh, but it, it truly, it did come down to a little bit of preferences. Now I did have some additional problems. One is my grip is more of a modern grip right here. So my hand is built to be way high so that I can take up all this real estate, lock out my wrist so I have this direct line, which is giving me great support while I shoot. Well, when my hand was way up high here, this massive ledge right here meant when the slide was going off, my hand would push up on this and it would lock it to the rear. That's no fault of the gun. That's what happens when you uh, use a modern grip for an archaic design. Ah, in the comments, everyone's mad, but that's what's happening for me. And so it would lock back to the right, shoot one, 
I'm in two rounds into a mag, and then all of a sudden it would lock back. And I'm like, what the crap? And then I got to investigate. I'm like, oh, I still see brass. It's all good to go. And then I just have to go forward and then rock it again. But that was a real big kind of mind screwer for me. Really didn't like that. Another thing is coming out of the holster, I had to make sure that I hit that thumb safety down. And I, so as I'm, I'm getting ready, I'm not thinking about anything except slow down, hit that safety off, marry this grip up low, you know, uh, way lower, and then come out. And then I, I've, I've got problems with the sights as well, in that these sights, when perfectly lined up, is shooting way high. To be able to shoot this four inch plate at, I don't know, 15 meters or so, I had to aim all the way at the very bottom. And when I'm aiming, I'm taking the very tops of the sights and ignoring the dots so that I'm, I'm even shooting lower than that. And then I would just go ahead and add a couple inches to the top and aim really low, and then I would get my hits. And so that was a mind screw. And I don't know what in the world's going on. I shot the other 1911 SIG, and it was more true to what SIGs zero, zero is for its sights. I just go ahead and shoot the dots wherever that front sight is, the front dot. That's what you're supposed to superimpose at your target around that 12 uh, meter distance. Uh, Glocks, you shoot like the very top of the sights. You know, you shoot your grip angles and you really ignore your dot. Uh, however, this, I shot the top angles like I do on, a, on uh, a Glock, but I had to just aim lower. And that was a big mind screw as well, which really, really slowed me down. Uh, furthermore, I got into some problems when I would shoot my slide would almost never lock to the rear on the last round. And that was problematic because now when I press the trigger uh, and the barrel is now empty, but it didn't lock to the rear, I'll get a click. Now the proper thing to do once you get a click is to always go tap rack, which added that immediate action to an in-battery stoppage. And so then I realized, oh no, it's a, a load the gun and then I got to do this. And uh, anyway, that was one more awkward piece that I really, really didn't like. I also want to go ahead and rag on the ergonomics. This one right here, go ahead and pull in a little closer here, guys. You'll notice that the grip, and I don't, I don't know whether this came with it or it was, probably came after, but look at this spongy mess right here. This is awful. I hate this so much. I can't, guys, look up here. I can't, I can't tell you how much I hate that. This super sucks. In that I, I want, I want my grip to be nice and set. I want nothing shifting. Now, some people will be like, "Oh, it's so comfortable. It's comfortable." I'm like, I give a rip what's comfortable to you. Shooting is all about biomechanics. You could have a gun that was extremely comfortable in your hand. You love the feel of it, but you sucked with it. And conversely, you could have a gun that you didn't really like very much. It's like that, that doesn't feel very good, but you rock and roll with it because it's really all about mechanics, biomechanics. That, well, that's what it's all about. It's, I don't care about your comfort. You want comfort, you buy a cardigan sweater. This is very comfortable and it's a disaster. I hate this and I hate that I have a safety back here and man, I just don't like the feel of any of it. I just hate it. The more I play with it, the more I'm like, ugh, gross. I want to scratch my tongue and burn my clothes. And that's how I feel about the 1911. And some of you guys would be like, no! But I get to, again, again, you may not like all of my stuff, and that's okay. You don't, you don't have to like all my stuff. You may not like these shoes. Screw you for not liking my shoes. No, it's, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Uh, I'm really speaking more to preferential stuff, and uh, some of you guys do like it, and very well. It is a preference. Is, I personally know some really dangerous old, like, Delta dudes who love these things. And guys, they've been stacking bodies for a very long time. Uh, and then uh, in, in the comments already, I, I, guys, already, before I even launch this video, people are me mentioned in the comments, two world wars, because there is a little historical note of like, man, tried and true. So let's go ahead and go over some pros and cons now. If I haven't already started brimming up and spilling over some cons, let's go ahead and hit it in short order. As one is I just don't find them very reliable. Uh, over years of instruction, I find people bringing all kinds of different guns to our classes. And when people run 1911s, more often than not, sometime in the course of a pistol one, pistol two, uh, pistol three class, that's where I'll find the malfunctions. And they'll swear to me that, no, 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 it's really reliable. This is so weird. And then for the rest of the day, they're kind of checking in with me. They're like, oh, I know what it is. It was this. And then they're always kind of like excusing away, but it's really reliable. And that's what I always hear. James Yeager says that a 1911 that runs well is as rare as a Glock that doesn't. 
if you disagree, I want you to hit the comments down below. James Yeager is wrong all the time. Uh, he made a video that was 50 reasons why John Lovell is wrong or 50 things John Lovell's wrong about. And I fact check that personally uh, in, in subjectively, un, unobjective fact check from me. And I found that he was wrong in every case and I was actually right all along. So suck on that, James Yeager. But anyway, these guns, man, I hear people swearing they're reliable but I'm not finding that. Now, the old school 1911s, the old Colt 1911s that were actually in the World War, if you shook them, they kind of rattle more, and this one doesn't, uh, in that the tolerances were looser. They, they, were, they were kind of clunkier machines that I think did run better than these that have tighter tolerances, which means if everything's just not perfect, then things foul up. Now, they can be really smooth and really kind of fun and just, I don't know how to describe it, but when I play with a really just well-oiled competition kind of 1911, I feel like, ooh, I can really rock and roll with this, but it's tighter tolerances, is really smooth, and I can appreciate that Pro here is it's a work of art. You know, they are beautiful guns. And when I look at this next to something, you know, like a, a, a blocky kind of chunky Glock, hands down, the, these are these are gorgeous guns. They, they really are. So there's one negative. I don't think they're very reliable as a whole. And a positive, I think they're beautiful works of art. Let's give another positive. Since they aren't necessarily reliable. Because they're so heavy, you could always turn it around like a hammer and use it as a blunt and instrument of, for trauma. So your gun goes down, 1911, my, may go down, turn it around and beat them to death with it. So because it is really heavy and unnecessarily large, you can beat someone to death with it. Great positive. Way to go, 1911 guys. But maybe I'm being overly hard. Let me give a really true positive to the 1911 platform. The trigger is extremely easy to just crush with. It's just such a light and short trigger, it's kind of idiot proof. If you are not a very good shooter, you can probably hit what you're aiming at with a 1911, just sh short light triggers. But now I'm feeling kind of like a bully, guys, and so I wanna give a real true positive. This is positive number three for 1911s. Typically they come with very light and short triggers, at least the modern ones do. And some people who just swear by them and they use them to compete and they're extremely high proficient uh, shooters, they really love them. I'd say a brand new shooter, because it's such a light and short trigger, it's not a lot of time to anticipate a shot. And so oftentimes someone without a lot of training will be able to kind of slay with this gun. Now, because it is a light and short trigger, that means it's easier to shoot faster and accurate than more of the modern kind of like striker fire guns. A striker fire gun has like a 0.35 inch pull, around five and a half ish pounds of pull. Now it's designed there because it's wanting to accomplish fast and accurate uh, engagements, but also to couple it with safety. Now, the trigger on a striker fire gun is going to have like this safe action system where it has a trigger uh, indent right there. So it's got a trigger safety, and then it's got a firing pin safety, and then it's got a drop safety. And all three of those safeties, which are inside, except for the trigger one, uh, are built into the trigger press. So if the trigger's not pulled, the gun cannot possibly go off. So then you draw, press the trigger, all those safeties are defeated, and it starts sending rounds down range, right? But the trigger itself is built a little bit longer. So that when you're pressing through, finding that wall where the pressure becomes greater, that's where you're kind of easing in to find your trigger within your trigger, so to speak. And so it's built entirely different. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, I really highly, highly urge you to check out our Pistol One class. I put all my classes on our streaming service, WPSN, our network. So if you want to plus up some training and you can't make an actual physical in-person class with us, which we we do classes all the time. Maybe in your area, check below for our training calendar and you guys can get in a class. But again, if you can't do that, check out our network. My classes are there and I'll tell you everything you need to know about working a trigger, the prep, the reset. And if you don't really understand your trigger, you're never going to be very good. You don't have to necessarily get it from me, but you do need to understand how these things work and how you're meant to press and reset a trigger. Got it? There's my thing, awesome.
All right, so back to our pros and cons here. I'd mentioned kind of in passing that it has a low round count. That's true, but I didn't really say, and this is a negative, so here it is. That's a negative. So three negatives, let's finish out our negatives with a fourth and final negative. I hate the grip angle. And to many of you, this will be a positive. You'll really like this. And I'm told that it's a natural grip angle, which means you just kind of point it out there and the sights are aligned naturally. However, I would counter back and say, uh, guns aren't natural. These aren't growing out of the ground. There's no organic firearms. Uh, so none of it's really necessarily natural. And I would say this more neutral uh, wrist position right here because it's not really locked out against an extremity with this line right here it's more easily broken and so i think it's worse for managing recoil than something that's designed with a more aggressive grip angle and so for me this is not a natural grip angle because i have some semblance of training which means when i present out this front sight is way far down I'm used to a 22 degree grip angle in the modern polymer guns or like a, a MMP would have more of like an 18 degree. This is an 11 degree grip angle, which means it's kind of just like stick on a stick more. And I, I hate that. And six kind of in between the MMP and the 1911. It's kind of in that thing. And I just don't like it. Uh, so, and you can like it. So for you, it may be a good positive. For me, it's a negative. I think for managing recoil, a more aggressive grip angle is gonna work more in line with biomechanics to keep the gun running flatter. And that's what I think. So uh, not only is it unnatural for me, because when I present the front sight's way low and then I gotta pick it up higher so I can even see it, uh, but I don't think it's uh, best for managing recoil. And we'll just agree to disagree on that point. But I listed it as a negative. The 11 degree grip angle is no bueno for this guy. So I wanna end off with a fourth and final positive that really truly I wanna give a, a good attaboy because the historical value of this gun cannot be understated. You know, truly it was two world wars, though I'd point out that they were extremely helpful in two world wars and even outside of those, they've been doing a lot of good, uh, been uh, putting a lot of bad guys down. So anyway, true win, great historic value, but I found that as I was running the gun and uh, I was getting angry at it, you know, part of it was, hey, I just suck at the gun and I wanna blame the thing. It's like I'm kicking a typewriter for having the audacity to not be a computer. You know, it's like this stupid typewriter doesn't have my favorite apps, you know, and that's what I'm doing. I'm getting angry at this for not being more modern and what I'm used to. And so anyway, just wanted to give a good shout because it truly uh, has a revered and sacred place in history. Guys, this was the 1911. I'd love to hear. Oh, it's right there. Custom T-L-E-R-L numeral dose. <laughs> Right there, Roman, Roman numeral, numeral two. Right there, it was there all the time. I could have just looked at the thing. I didn't want to tell you. Very good. I like 1911. Eh, there you go. <laughs> Guys, make sure you subscribe to our channel and toggle notifications bell to all like, comment, share. We're gonna have all kinds of cool content. We've got such good plans, don't we? coming out so you don't want to miss any of that stuff that's forthcoming check down below in this video for relevant links appreciate that guys channel sponsor really appreciate you and 1911 i think i've said it all right just all right that's it see you guys I'm gonna show you how to devastatingly deliver an impact to a person who's out of your reach. So if I have this as a tool in my toolbox and the opportunity arises, then I have a second to decide whether or not I can take him to church. So this is a level three hard plate and my knife just went right through it.